everybody, Jefferson Webster here. Happy holidays. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull together a video game discussion this month regarding Christmas. It's just been really busy. I've got family coming into town. you got to buy presents. You guys know how it is. In fact, that, oh, that's my cousin Klaus. He's coming in from Germany. One second. Come on in. Hello. Klaus, my favorite cousin. How are things in Germany? Good. Nice sweatpants outfit. Hey, what's in the bag? Yeah, it's, it's video games. Video games? Awesome. Which ones do you have in there? Die Hard video games. You know, I've actually never played those except for the arcade one. Let's check those out. Ah, later. Beer first. Ah, come on, Klaus. Bubby. I said later! Nein! Good lord. All right, we'll get you some beer. Oh, Donka. Donka shit. Uh, Rolls. Beer first, huh? I'll fix his wagon. Let's teach Klaus a little lesson. Use a little ketchup. Organic? Sure. That'll do the trick. Well, I don't think he's going to be needing these for the foreseeable future. Time to check these out. The first Die Hard video game was released for the PC and Commodore 64 in 1989 and 1990. The game was released by Activision and is kind of a 3D hallway game. It reminds me of walking through those annoying buildings in Friday the 13th on the NES. The game follows the plot of the first Die Hard film as John McClane must navigate his way through the Nakatomi Plaza building against terrorists. It's... well, it's certainly an 80s Commodore game. Yeah, it's not great. Alright, let's see what else we've got in here. We've got a GameCube game, there's a couple of PlayStation games, uh... Oh, walkie talkie, huh. Hey Al, can you hear me? Hey, this is Jefferson Webster. Who's this? Hey, who the hell is Jefferson Webster? I'm just a guy trying to play diehard video games. Do you have any tips for me? Yeah, don't get married. Uh, no, I meant about the video games. Ah, some jerk off on a plane once had some advice for me about video games. Oh yeah, what'd he say? To tolerate a bad game, you take your shoes and socks off and make fists with your feet on a rug. Well, that guy's an asshole. I know, right? In 1990, a Die Hard game was released on the TurboGrafx-16. However, it was only released in Japan. This is a run-and-gun game similar to that of Akari Warriors. It loosely follows the first Die Hard movie with many anomalies. I'm guessing that this was a repurposed game. From a gameplay perspective, this is a decent game. The graphics are pretty underwhelming considering that this is supposed to be 16-bit, but the cutscenes look good throughout and are really the only portions of the game that are consistent with the film. The single best quality about this game is the music. There's some kick-ass music in this game. Supposedly, there's an English language ROM file of this game that you can play, but regardless, the Japanese version is always out there and playable if you want to check it out. Die Hard 2, Die Harder on the Amiga, PC, Commodore 64, and Atari ST. This game came out in 1992, two years after the second film was released. It does follow the plot of the film via five levels. However, it is one of those 2D point-and-shoot games. There are civilians that you aren't supposed to shoot in the game, and boss battles throughout. It isn't anything to write home about, but it isn't horrible. Hey buddy, are you there? Yeah, what's up? So I'm less familiar with some of these diehard games. Do you think you could help me out with some of them? Something bad every Christmas. I'm on the way. Oh, hey girls. Make balls with your feet, huh? Well, here goes nothing. Die Hard on the NES by Activision. I've heard a lot about this game, but have never played it, so I figured I'd show you my first run at it. It didn't last long. 
Here's a note to any video game programmers out there. Making a video game difficult does not inherently make it replayable. In this case, it makes it unplayable. Based upon your available ammunition and liberal health bars, you really have no chance at this game right at the jump. So I suggest looking for an equalizer. You'll want to consider ammo, health, and time cheats to make this game somewhat enjoyable. Once you've cheated to make this game reasonable, it actually isn't a terrible game. I can appreciate what they tried to do. The game is pretty loyal to the source material with multiple floors, stairs, elevators, and you can even get in the air duct. Where I think this game and all of the diehard video games fall short is in suspense. In the film, John McClane has to take out 12 terrorists in the Nakatomi Plaza building. In this game, you have to kill 40 enemies, so it is more of a run and gun type of experience. The reason fans love Die Hard so much was the element of suspense. None of the games I'm going to talk about today have any stealth. It is mostly just run and shoot. That being said, I'm not going to throw this game under the bus. The programmers probably need slapped around a little bit for the difficulty settings, but once those sins are accounted for, it is an average game for the NES. Yeah, come play some video games, have a few laughs, haha. <laughs> OW GOD DAMN IT! Die Hard Trilogy was released in 1996 by Fox Interactive and developed by Probe Entertainment. The game was available on the PlayStation, Sega Saturn, and Windows PC. It is based upon the first three Die Hard films and features three different types of gameplay for each film. The first game is a third-person shooter based on the first movie and is pretty good but doesn't age well from a graphics and gameplay perspective. It's pretty violent and was banned in Germany. I'm not sure how Klaus got a hold of this one. The second game is a point-and-click shooter where you can use a controller, mouse, or light gun to shoot enemies. It's okay, but the gameplay is just monotonous after a while. The third game is where I struggle the most. Die Hard with a Vengeance was a film begging for a good video game adaptation. I imagine something like Crazy Taxi with timed puzzles to solve at the end of each destination. Instead, you get a laughable version of Chase HQ where you just drive into enemy vehicles. For me, this video game is the black eye of the franchise. Evidently, the developers wanted to lean into this game much harder, creating an authentic rendering of New York City. However, frame rates, system constraints, and other issues left us with this gem. Surprisingly, Die Hard Trilogy is the most successful Die Hard video game to date. In fact, it became a PlayStation Greatest Hits title. The Die Hard Arcade game was the first Die Hard video game I've ever played. It was released in 1996 by Sega. I remember the game being fun and well-paced in arcades. It plays similar to beat-em-ups like Final Fight. It was the first game in its genre to use texture-mapped polygonal graphics, which look poor today, but were quite impressive back then. The game had a variety of weapons such as guns, missile launchers, or you could just beat them up the old-fashioned way. It would periodically have those button-timing action sequences, which I would never be able to do. The game was ported to the Sega Saturn in 1997 and later to the PlayStation 2. Interestingly, the console ports seemed to be superior to the arcade version with sharper graphics and smoother gameplay. The game was not originally intended to be a die-hard game. It was first released in Japan as Dynamite Detective. Fox Interactive licensed the game for the die-hard franchise and tweaks were made. Now there's John McClane killing bad guys. Several aspects of the game such as the second player Chris Thompson, the plot, saving the president's daughter, and bosses throughout the game cannot be explained by the die-hard franchise. Regardless, it's still fun to play today. And they did make a sequel for the game on the Sega Dreamcast titled Dynamite Decca 2. However, it's not licensed or affiliated with the Die Hard franchise. Wait, did he just change his shirt? Seriously, go back and watch the movie. John McClane changes his shirt in that air duct. It's white throughout the entire film. Then he gets in that air duct and it comes out and he's wearing a green tank top. It's crazy. Based upon the success of the first Die Hard trilogy game, Fox Interactive decided to release Die Hard 2 Viva Las Vegas. This time the video game's plot is an original story, not from a Die Hard film. Big mistake. The story is about a guy opening a prison in Las Vegas, and he's throwing a party, inviting John McClane. Which, first of all, that's weird. Hey, I'm incarcerating criminals. Let's party. Well, as expected, all hell breaks loose, and John McClane is needed to save the day. The game features all three game modes from the first Die Hard trilogy game, except that instead of separate games, these are integrated into one storyline. The game didn't do nearly as well as the first installment, and well, you know how I feel about the first one. It wasn't so good. <laughs> Scratch my car, punk, and I'll take it out of your paycheck.
Once again, the Die Hard video game franchise veers into bad ideas with another original storyline in 2002 with Die Hard Vendetta. This game is a first-person shooter released on the GameCube in North America. Europe received PS2 and Xbox releases. The plot takes place five years after Die Hard with a Vengeance. Hans Gruber's son recovers some paintings as he's trying to clean up his family's name. Ha! During this ceremony, John's daughter Lucy, now a police officer, is kidnapped. Well, spoiler alert, John saves Lucy and it is later revealed that Gruber's son is a dick masterminding everything. Shocker! Similar to Die Hard Trilogy 2, the visual and voice acting for John McClane is pretty poor. Getting ready to speak. Watch out for his European charm. I'm not going to get used to it. The next guy to hold you is going to be your 300 pound cellmate. I just don't understand how you can screw this up. It's Die Hard. You have to get John McClane right. They should have just hired the voice actor from the first trilogy right. game. Aside from this, there are some bright spots. Al makes several appearances in the game and is voiced by the actor in the first two films. Plus, you can take someone hostage, which is pretty cool. Also, there are puzzles to solve, which is a nice change of pace. The first-person shooter gameplay is pretty decent and... Oh, wait a minute, is that Tupac? Gruber! Overall, this game is pretty average, but I think I only paid $6 for this, so if it's in your wheelhouse, definitely check it out. Oh, God. Bro, are you alright? Just trying to fire down a thousand-year-old Twinkie. What do they put in these things, anyway? Sugar and rich flour. Partially hydrogenated vegetable oil, polysorbate 60, and yellow dye number 5. Just everything a grown boy needs. You're a big fat guy, aren't you, Al? Die Hard Nakatomi Plaza was released on the PC in 2003. It directly follows the film and dialogue, however the voice acting and some of the character renderings are pretty poor. Man, the door in here is locked too. How the heck are we getting out of here? We're not. You're gonna wait here and stay out of sight. The game does take some liberties with new content and situations. Overall, it's your standard first-person shooter that time period. Nothing to write home about here. The most recent Die Hard games are based upon the last two films. These are smartphone games, and you guys know how I feel about these. The second one had some good dad jokes in it, if you're into that. But let's move on. So what's next for Die Hard? Well, in September, it was announced that the sixth film will be titled McLean, and it's going to go into production. The film is said to star Bruce Willis and will bounce back and forth between a 60 and 20 year old John McLean, which would actually have events occurring before the first film. Will we get a good video game based upon this movie? Time will tell. Peanut, we got to get rid of these games before Klaus wakes up. I'm going to need your help. All right, let's do this. Happy Holidays, guys, from Jefferson Webster and Peanut. Happy Holidays. I secretly hate you. All right, then. That's enough. Oh, oh. oh. oh Scheiße! My video games! Look!